Hello everyone, creator of She, Billy Tucci here, and I am so, so proud to announce the debut launch of our very first On The Bus edition, the She On The Bus volume number one. The groundbreaking masterwork that literally changed the face of comics and launched the bad girl revolution returns in this premiere formatted 500 page full color hardcover edition, collecting all 12 issues of She, Way of the Warrior, the three-part interlacing Tomoe miniseries, and the 48-page She vs. Tomoe, celebrating the 25th anniversary of this epic crossover classic. This modern-day Sohai Warrior saga introduces Anna Ishikawa, a young woman born of two cultures and who was drafted into a shadow war that has existed for over 500 years. In this complete full-color omnibus, we follow Anna as she begins her violent assault on the Yakuza Oyoban Masahiro Arashi. But after several fiery clashes and witnessing the grieving children of those she slain in battle, Anna turns away from the sword. Now the hunter becomes the hunted, as Arashi seeks his own revenge against this faceless assailant. And his answer is Anna's family's centuries-old enemy, the Naren Sohai, led by her best friend, the assassin Tomoe. Heartbreaking twists and exhilarating turns ensue as Anna's mission unravels into one of blood and madness, and whose culmination's only salvation is mercy and forgiveness. But wait, there's more. We're also offering lots of other she-related items, including original art, prints, shirts, commissions, and special editions, including the ash can to she's next great adventure launching this October, She Sakura. And the best news is, this entire collection is complete and ready for press. We just need your help to get it funded. So please join our crusade and harken back to the days when comics were fun and thought-provoking. So please pledge, please share. Thank you for 25 amazing years in comics. And remember, we're all in this together, and we're all she strong. Salute. What is up, everybody? This is Phil from Zade Comics, and today we have a special stream going on. I'm just sending some links out um, to some peeps. We're going to be looking at the She books that I have, so you guys that have not yet uh, or, or are going to be waiting for the Omnibus to come out, um, you can see what is going on in those books, and there's some, some beautiful uh, books. So, so cool such a cool iconic character and uh to see what billy has done with this character is is amazing all the crossovers he's done which i hear is going to be another omnibus so just sending out the link here to see if other people want to jump in it's going to be a short stream i got some stuff to do uh today but i definitely wanted to um jump on here show off some sick artwork and talk about the story. Uh, I'll send the link to my boy Shelby Robertson too, because be my boy. Uh, and if anyone else is in, in the chat, uh, it's a buddy of mine that wants a link. Maybe Leroy. No, nah, we're get, keeping Leroy today. Let's see. Uh, we got Andrew Taz in the chat. What's up? We got Leroy. It's a show. Intel stream, shocking. Yo, I got a brand to uphold here. The people expect something from me, and I'm not going to let them down. We got Kamara in the chat dropping that link. Let's get into this, because I only got a short period of time. I got to move all my magic cups out of the way that are on, on my floor, so I can actually get can actually get to this. Uh, I also need a new camera holder. But here, this is this is my first issue. So this was the 25th anniversary issue. A story behind this, a Billy, um, when he first started, you know, coming around, uh, doing YouTube stuff, hanging out with Ethan, uh, I really gravitated towards him because he is just such a cool guy, one of the nicest guys I've ever met in comics, and we met at a um, Chicago convention, and I kind of like hung out with him. The whole weekend i bought this this was uh it's the first issue reprinted beautiful cover 
And I really want to, you know, we have a bunch of other stuff we can we can look through, including some of the new, the newer issues. Uh, but really wanted to look into this one because this is where it started, right? This is the book that started it all. It's so beautiful. The interior is, I think, uh, one of the big reasons for that is it watercolored. Beautiful and just right off the bat, of course, Billy always talks about how this was a huge controversial page the meditation in the nude, but these following pages are just so gorgeous. Uh, my dog's over here trying to get out of my room. Hold on one second. But look at that. Homage to that traditional Japanese painting. Oh, it's just so, so amazing. And, you know, this is kind of a dream sequence here. Going to this centerfold sideways splash. Look at that. So this is the kind of quality you guys are going to get in that omnibus I can't wait. I back mine. I can't wait to uh, get my hands on this. This is not. This is a uh, a magician's board. Uh, these are just dents from doing magic on it. So like it's a cardboard, so you could fan art cards. It's not a. I resent that, Leroy. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah. So I tweeted this out, guys. If you're on Twitter, definitely go over, tweet this out, and. Without further ado, the man, the myth, the legend. What's up, brother? What's up, bro? How you doing? Good, good. Just thought I'd uh, talk about some she. I've been wanting to do a stream like this, kind of looking at all the old stuff. I know uh, a really cool video that everybody could check out is on Ethan's channel. You guys were at a convention once, and you kind of ran through this, did like your director's cut of the book, which was really, uh, really fun and interesting. Oh yeah, that was like that was one of his first comic artist pro secrets pages um, yeah. uh, shows actually, and he did a look back into the She Way of the Warrior number one, and we just kind of flipped through it and stuff, and just like you have there, so it was um, it was fun. I like yeah. doing this, Phil. I I don't know. Well, you know me. I like getting on all these streams and stuff and talking, and especially when I'm at, if I'm at the art table. Yeah. working away here then i can uh i can do it i'm do I'm, I'm actually on page 16 right now i'm drawing page 16 of she sakura which is our one. october book damn that's awesome yeah yeah, yeah october yeah, that's, yeah that, that's we launched that's our campaign for indiegogo for october and um we uh that's that's our plan going forward now is to have all these books uh done by the time we launch them colored everything yeah, that's amazing. That's the, yeah. the great thing that you're able to do now is, is get that stuff done. So basically you're doing campaigns back to back, fulfilling back to back. Uh, I think that's the dream for a lot of these creators that are doing yeah. it. And you could do and you could do it. And that's that's how we used to do when we were, you know, publishing so many books a year. You know, I don't know how many ten books a year, whatever I was doing at one point. Yeah. Like, Whoa, drop a pen. Um but uh, it's been great, man. People have been fantastic. You've been awesome. Thank you for all your support. No problem. And uh, let's keep rocking and rolling with it, man. I'm 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 just blown away uh, by the uh, response from people. It's, no, uh, yeah, I, I can't wait. <laughs> Definitely want to help and, and spread the word. And I think this is a perfect time for maybe some people that haven't read G just to take a look at what they could expect from the omnibus because all this stuff is going to be in there. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's the, that's the first issue. What I loved about that issue was um, I think I'm a far better – I don't know if we've had this conversation or I was on Ethan's show, and I think I'm a far better draftsman today than I was back then and storyteller, but I had such passion for it. I mean, I was like 26 when I drew that, I think, 25, 26. And, wow. You know, you, and I didn't know anything. I didn't know anybody in comics. I'm like, I just like comic books, and I'm just going to do my own book, you know? Yeah. Well, you can totally see the passion and stuff in here, just the, yeah. the, the poses and the action shots. Like, reading this first issue, it's such an awesome vigilante book, you know? You, just the the mood um, and kind of, like, montage of, of her getting ready, going out into the night and yeah, it's, uh, like an, it's an introduction to her and then ultimately though she comes so she comes she's just going out and and you know when you do a first comic you got to establish the character and yeah. what she what her abilities are and all and mm -hmm. but if you see at the end the whole reason why she why she is there in new york is that she's drafted for this war to kill this man and she finally finds her target and she just crumbles and fails you know yeah she, she wipes out all these other these these thugs these random thugs um 
She did. That's funny. I, just, I remember drawing these pages, dude. That's so cool. You weren't even born when I drew this. It's like 27 years ago. Yeah. It's my yeah. son called me. I'm, hang on. I got to argue with my son. He's right, going to no a game, but he invited all his friends to come over to the pool. Hang on. Listen to this. <laughs> Hello? Are we going? Well, did you talk to mom? You got a game. Yeah. You missed Saturday's game, too. She said it was okay. All right. Tell her to take you. Tell her I'm streaming right now. She will take you. She promised. Okay. Okay? All right, tell her to get me some ice cream. <laughs> He's got a game, so he missed Saturday's game because we went to Pennsylvania to my in-law's farm. Oh, yeah. Uh, so he missed that day, and now he's got a game tonight. And now he invited all his friends over. He's got like 10 kids coming over. And so we're sitting there like, wait a minute. He's got a game tonight. <laughs> That's awesome. Is it going to be plans again? If you guys are just tuning in, we're here with Billy Tucci, Teen Sensation. Now, did you see – um? You're in the uh, you're in that wrestling game. Did you see that? Dude, how freaking awesome! I'm putting a fan on. It's, it's hot. Um, okay. How freaking cool is that, man? <laughs> I ride in on the motors. It's so funny because I only wear my glasses because they're only one power. Yeah. You know, but uh, one one and a quarter power. But uh, it, but when I when I look at the screen, you know how close the screen is. I can't read it. I only need them for reading and you know yeah. and, and drawing too. Now it, 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 I can't believe how big it makes everything. But they had the pic but I never wear glasses and they had the picture of me wearing glasses and I think it's pretty funny. It's so good. You know, up here. <laughs> and it's got teen sensation on the front and she in the back. That's freaking great. Yeah, shout outs to um our boy 6 a.m. comics because uh he's killing it over here with the CG uh the CG wrestling when they I mean that's amazing. Look at that. And as soon as I saw this, I'm like, oh, that's Billy riding it on, on his chopper. Yeah, and I have a motorcycle, too, and I, I've always had motorcycles. That's what makes me very happy. Yeah, that's I the legend. It. The legend Dude, of Billy Tucci. If I said a mustache, on. I'd look like Theodore Roosevelt in this. <laughs> look at that, right? Put a mustache on me. Oh, yeah, and you're kicking ass, too. Uh, yeah, and I, it, it, it's, we all just beat the shit out of each other. And I love to see Graham Nolan always wears um, – Graham always wears Hawaiian shirts. Yeah. It's so funny that he's got him in a Hawaiian shirt. But look at just look at that! I <laughs> just beat the piss out of me. I take him, and I love Dan in the in the bunny suit. Yeah. Like, how the hell did he make this stuff? Oh man! Yeah, this is ah. awesome. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about, Graham Nolan. Oh, uh, that's hilarious. Me and Graham Nolan are going to see each other next weekend, smoking cigars and drink. Well, he drinks bourbon. I'll be drinking scotch. Hell yeah! Because uh, I don't like sharing my scotch with anybody, to be honest with you. So, Billy, my, my, my scotch costs too much. Everybody wants to drink my scotch. <laughs> so I'll buy him a bottle of bourbon and then I'll buy myself a bottle of scotch. We're, we're going to sit out in Mohegan Sun and smoke cigars. That sounds like a good time. And then we'll fight. <laughs> so this panel, these panels here yeah. were yeah. so like, these are etched in my brain because the lighting on it from the coloring, just the mood that it's set. And, you know, just that yank back of the head is such a good um, kind of like setup panel to a yeah. turn, right? Where it's yeah. like, okay, shit's going to go down here. And then you get those the big long panels here. Yeah, and then the ghosts start coming. I love those. I always do those those big panels like that, and and uh, that you know just it was just that's if you go down the next panel, that's me. It's uh, me and Debbie. It was like Easter that year, and and it's so funny how my wife would always dress up. And she was always yeah. dolled up, and here I am, and I'm like wearing a, a I don't know stupid T-shirt or something, and that's me with a, like a water pistol up to her face. <laughs> And I use that for reference. I got to find that stuff. But if anybody saw those pictures of all the reference pictures I would take of her, of me beating her up and then her fighting me, they would think like I was an abuser or something. Yeah. And, and another thing that I love and I always bring up when I talk about uh, the she books is uh, the storytelling kind of aspect. I, I feel like this these books are really like I can hand this book to my mom to read because you kind of do these panel cracks yeah. that lead the reader to the next panel. And that's genius. You know, yeah, I think that, it's, it's a subliminal thing. thing. I've never seen anybody else do it. And again, I didn't, cause I didn't know any better. I'm like, well, this will help people lead their eyes from one panel to another subliminally. Right. It, it's Yo, a graphic. What's up, Andy and Art? <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, what's up, Art? Art, you bear in the chat. Um, it's kind of like a graphical design choice that yeah. uh, only I've seen you do. And it's great. I think it would be great to just get, people into reading comics that way because if I hand a book to my parents, they're like, I don't know which panel to go to from where, you know? Right, right. So it, 
it's so uh, so good. I got issue two here. And another thing that I wanted to um, talk about, something you brought to the uh, the rest of the series, is kind of that like hidden ghost soldier aspect. Yeah, the so high warriors. Yeah, the, the, yeah, that's it's primarily a ghost story. And yeah. uh, that 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 painting in the back is the same is by Barry Orkin, who colored that issue in issue one. Oh wow! That's my my buddy from junior high, Barry Orkin, is an amazing artist and designer, and uh, he's done all my logos. I draw them up real cheesy, and then he fixes them all up, and he does all of our logos. Yeah. Now, Billy, I had a question. Like, if you were just starting out now with this same IP. In today's, uh, you know, comic book climate, do you think you would have been as successful and been, you know, for lack of a better term, been able to get away being a white guy, you know, writing this half Asian American character? You well, think you would have gotten black for that? In today's well, I got I to gotta be honest with you. Um, if I can curse here, I really don't give a fuck. Go ahead. You know? <laughs> no, it's a story I wanted to tell. You know, we don't bastardize a culture. Uh, we have a lot of fans in Asia, and um, you know, I, I wanted to approach it with respecting Japanese history, Japanese mythology, yes, and even with making her a female character and how she, uh, you know, she, the 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 thing is, is is when I first created the concept of the character back in 1990, she was it was a male character, and the yeah. more Japanese research I got into, the um, the, the more the story took hold, it really just took on a life of its own. And um, the uh, sorry, Art saying I, I know I'll make I'll have made it when I when I make it into a, when I when I'm made into a wrestler. <laughs> uh, that's Buzz. So okay, so I'm going to interrupt real quick. See that image on the left? That's yes. by my buddy Mark Sass, who's an amazing painter. Uh, it was that was supposed to be the cover to She Number One. Wow. And if you look at it, she originally had a round red circle around her eye. Oh, and yeah. I don't know why I was doing that. I'm like, I guess that's what comics need. It's like a Japanese flag, <laughs> and, you know, and like, thank God I didn't. It's so cliched, you know? Yeah. Um, and uh, someone told me, uh, Neil Hansen, who was at Comics Value Monthly Magazine, said, lose the circle. You don't need it. Yeah. Beautiful geisha-like face. You don't need it. So I dropped it. But my buddy Mark got so mad at me, and we didn't talk for like three months uh, because I insulted him by saying, I, I just not going to use that cover. I, I have to come up with a new cover. And that's when I drew the one with her swords crossed, you know? Right. Um, and, and that's, that be ends up becoming comic book history when I was able to, to do that cover that people really, really responded to that cover. And, uh, that's, but, uh, but going back, um, so anyway, so, uh, get into the Japanese history. I was talking about the, um, the, oh, Adam Post is texting me. That's funny. I got to see what Adam Post says here. Okay. Post, man. Uh, congratulations on the launch. Adam Post. Yeah, so it is a funny story. Is that When I created the character and I went to San Diego in 1993, if you're watching any of the streams, um, I wanted to work for Marvel and DC. Yeah. Or Dark Horse or anybody. So I came in there, but the samples I had were for this book. Mm -hmm. um, and the thing is, is that uh, nobody, nobody wanted to hire me. Uh, I met Brian Polito. He was the only guy that was that treated me like an equal or like a human being in a way. Uh, and he's like, man, why don't you do your own book? He's like, what is this? I'm like, this is my story. He's like, this is great. Why do you make this? Yeah. So I'm like, Holy crap, I'm going to make this. So that was probably July of 1994, 93. Came home, talked to my um, mentor, uh, John Tartaglioni, who's a famous Marvel artist, longtime art director, inker, uh, and uh, – he said, uh, I, I got to introduce this guy, Adam Post. Adam Post, I'm doing a Babe Ruth comic for him. He's amazing, this kid. And I met him, and I loved Adam. And I you know, and I, I pitched my comic to him. <laughs> and uh, he turned me down. <laughs> He's like, yeah. I can be honest with you. Girl books don't sell. I'd publish it, but girls' books don't sell. Damn you, Adam. Uh, uh, yeah. And, uh, and then, which was the best thing ever happened to me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> for I'm real. You know, three and a half million comics later or whatever. Uh, so then I'm like, oh, well, I'm like, well, you know what? I met that guy, Brian. He was so awesome. Um, I'm going to do my own book. Why yeah. not I'll publish it myself? I had no idea a comic was published. And I just went on this mission. I went to comic shops. I went to comic book conventions. I went to um, to to uh, the library to read how do you make a comic book? How is a book made? 
Right. Uh, now here I am talking to you, Phil Diaz. <laughs> The thing I love about your storytelling is you really know how to make scenes memorable. And th this scene here, this ending of issue two is like, man, holy crap. You, you know, you're reading through this thing and you turn the page and it's like, boom. Yeah, if you flip it over, because that's one of his top henchmen, Arashis. Right. And if you see that, she takes, they're the fighting and she, she, she does a split and she ends up cutting his bowels. And you see her cutting yeah. his eye in half. And he's just looking at her like, oh, my God, I'm going to die. I'm going to suffer. And then through mercy, she takes his head like because he's a noble warrior. He's a he's he's he, he's he's a noble adversary. And that's yeah. what, and then she leaves her calling card. And that's another thing that page. And then the opening page of her nude meditating. Yes. <laughs> people, you know, people loved it. But, you know, a lot of people are shocked. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. What is this? So. It's a good thing I turned the Comics Code Authority down because they never would have uh, <laughs> they never would have they never would have accepted that. But then that's the that's the she way the warrior. But that's the ad for the way the warrior um, uh, trade paperback, and that's the the infamous six fingered cover. Because if you look at her right hand, she has six fingers on that hand. You can't tell in that picture. Oh yeah, she does. Yeah, she does. <laughs> yeah, she does <laughs> well. <laughs> and the funny story is that's Debbie posing for me there in that cover. Um, the funny story is, is that we, I don't know, like Wizard Magazine or something interviewed me and says, tell me the story about the, the six fingered cover. This, <laughs> and I said, all I could say is when I drew that cover, she didn't have six fingers. And then they interviewed Jimmy and Jimmy said, no, she had nine fingers and she was holding a hamburger. And I, <laughs> I tried to fix it as best I could. So That's hilarious. Yeah. Oh, this is great. Yeah. But you know, Today, like even when I was writing some of my characters to the lost pages, I would, you know, bound, like I would shoot my ideas to friends. And uh, I have one character who's a, a female character, and her name mm -hmm. is, is Taz. She's part of that Crimstone character. And and some of my uh, friends would be like, "Are you, you sure you're, you're going to be okay? Like, are people going to be okay with you writing a female character and stuff?" And I'm like. Yeah, writers have been writing characters that aren't them for millennia. Like that's how it goes. And yeah, I, it's for writing. It's like like acting. You know, right. you're playing a Roman soldier. Well, I never lived like a Roman soldier. Well, that's called acting. Right. And <laughs> you know, here I was you know, just thinking, I'm like, wow, Billy was doing this. Now I wonder what the mainstream would say about him and and stuff like that. Would would this ever happen? But of course, you know, you do it on your own. It's going to happen. And that's the the great thing about you. You're, oh, look at this. Damn. Oh, yeah. That was a book where we did. That was a, a triptych poster um, that me and Mark Silvestri did. And yeah. that was Billy Tan did Tempest, Mark's new character, before Witchblade oh. came out. That was going to be his new big character. And then I drew uh, Sideblade and Mark drew She. And it was a big a triptych poster, big, beautiful poster they put out. And that was, this is when we were planning the She Sideblade book. Yeah, so, good times, man. Yeah. yeah was, uh, another magazine. Yeah. <laughs> But the, the thing is amazing, like the legacy of this character, Billy, and the amount of things that you've done with the character is insane. Like crossovers with Marvel characters. Yeah. Uh, crossover yeah, Wolverine. Marvel. Yeah, we did image crossovers. Because that was a time where you could do, you know, pretty much what you wanted. And you find the good people, you know, because there's, there's assholes everywhere, as you could, as you know. Right. But you find good guys and you become with good friends with good people. And, you know, then you're just hanging out and like, hey, we should do a crossover. I remember you were in Marvel and they're like, we'll do a crossover with you. <laughs> you, know, so watch, you know? It's like, yeah, why not? Why not? Yeah. And he went to the big shots and they're like, yeah, this book is out selling all our books. We might as well do a crossover. <laughs> That's so cool. And yeah. then it was, I'm sure it was a wild time. Like you were in your, you know, young days. And I can imagine uh, like us doing stuff like that now. Yeah, I'm probably your, I mean, how old are you? Uh, I don't remember. I'm like 27, 20. You don't remember yet. So I'm like your age when I'm doing this. <laughs> I was thinking last night, I'm like, how old am I? I'm either 27 or 28. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, wait till you get to be 37, 38. It gets worse. I got to like, how old am I? So, but, but yeah, those, are, those are the days, bro. And that's issue. So that's the thing I did is that in, in, the, in the omnibus that we're putting out, um, there's, uh, we're, we're, we're doing the first 16 issues of she, the first three issues of Tomoe, and then the, the side blade, the she saw the she Tomoe crossover, but see that comic right there, that's she way the warrior number six, 
but that's also Tomoe number one. So, oh, okay. Because the story starts to interlace. So there's a Tomoe number zero, which is drawn by Amanda Connor. Uh, and then there's a Tomoe number two and a Tomoe number three. And that's when you introduce this character and we go back in time and talk about her. And, and um, character, man. great they, character design. Yeah, they were, they were fun times, man. It's they were, they were, they, again, we could do whatever, we, you know, you would just do whatever you want. That guy in the lower right hand corner, that's my buddy Barry Ork. And that's the one that I, that's the one that did the colors, she issue one and yeah. two and the, and the back cover illustrations. But, you know, he's a big shot. So he was just like, I can't do this, man. <laughs> like, well, I got this computer coloring. I see all the image books doing it. Let's have them do it. What's up, Eric yeah. Weathers? So Yo, we got Eric in the chat. What's up, brother? Thanks Eric in the in. chippy. Uh, Leroy in the chat says, coming on a Phil Diaz stream is a punishment, not a privilege. Remember, <laughs> remember that, Billy. <laughs> wow, this is so, yeah, so, so they, they, were, they, were, they were fun times, man, doing that stuff. You know, you just love it. You just love, you know, introducing these characters. And, and what we told from there, that's the Naren Six right there. And they're the ones coming hunting She. And from She's point, Anna's point of view, they're these badasses, you know, badass warriors, everything like that. In the yeah. Tomoe series, we tell it from, Anna, from Tomoe's point of view, and you get to know that team. And how like the, the big guy who his name is Gojira and he's this hulking monster type of a guy, but he's really you find out he's really a teddy bear. You know, he's a real gentle giant. Yeah. And uh, it's just fun stuff like that woman. If you flip over the back to page, uh -huh. that the, the woman standing with Anna, no flip back over. This one. Keep flipping over. Keep flipping over. There you go. Okay, so the woman in the purple with Anna, that yeah. is uh that is my First professor at college at FIT, my illustration teacher. Oh, and wow. she was tough as nails, really yeah. tough. But she just liked me. And her name is Anna Ishikawa. So I named the character after her. Oh, so cool, man. Yeah, and she passed away in 2013, but she was a she was an amazing woman. She was uh her family was thrown in the concentration camps in World War II. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and I would just talk to her and I, I I found a soft spot in her and she just explained so much about her life. Which is mirrored in Anna's life, even though Anna's in Japan. Yeah, but and that's a dream sequence. You got to have a cool dream sequence. Man, these are just beautiful. Like right in the band forest, you know. So cool, but yeah, you, you know, you could when you read this stuff, you could really tell how much passion you have for this character and culture. Like it, mm -hmm. it seemed so researched, and uh, I think that is a big key to this series, where everything seems authentic. And when reading it, you're kind of also learning about this stuff, you know, uh, from, from the characters and the culture. Um, yeah, know. that's what we tried to do. And even with Senryaku, which is going to be our second on the bus edition. Yeah, um, that's that's the book. I had all the big names in comics and I had, you know, geez, every George Perez and Jim Lee and Adam Hughes and. My God, you know, you name them. I had a bunch of them. Independent yeah. guys and big mainstream guys all draw she. Um, and uh, that was, it was all based on the 36 stratagems of the Chinese art of war. And that was our, that was our first Eisner loss. She's lost three Eisners and I've lost four total. But I guess it's, the important thing is being nominated, right, Phil? Oh, of course, yeah. <laughs> Talk about that. Forever. It's a good time. The Eisners are a good time, man. You go there and they, they have free food and the bar's there and all and you hang out and you get sauced with other cartoonists, <laughs> and then you, you get to know we'll people. Doing really that well. for indie stuff. No. We're Check gonna get drunk tomorrow on my show. Well, I'm hoping to get my wife drunk. We, we're, <laughs> tomorrow on the Pop XP at nine o'clock, we have um, we have Jeff Smith and his wife Ajaya and Brian Polito and Francisca, and we're doing oh. a San Diego Comic Con happy hour for two hours. That's and gonna we're be just awesome. gonna drink and reminisce about the shows and all, the, and we might have some special guests to come in. Everybody tune into that. And if you yeah, guys are that's fun. Ask us questions and stuff like that. And it's it's good. They're, they're great people. They're really great people. Um, both of them too. If you know Brian Polito, man, there's no F's given with him. Yeah. And you know, same thing with Jeff Smith. You know, Jeff's well aware of the gatekeepers and all, and that's why he went crowdfunding. He went Kickstarter because that's you know, everyone when they first do crowdfunding, they think Kickstarter. And uh he killed sure. it. I mean, he did two hundred and sixty thousand or more, something crazy. We got Gomez Adams in the yeah. chat. Happier Go time. Ahead. I used to read She and never thought to worry whether Billy was Japanese or not. Yeah. Yeah. Some people came up to me in the beginning and said, uh, and 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 asked, and it's like I thought you were Japanese because I guess Tucci might sound like a Japanese name to some people. I don't know. 
Yeah, that's weird. Yeah. If you, guys, if you guys are just tuning in here, uh, please hit that like and subscribe button. We're on with the great teen sensation, Bill Tucci. Teen sensation, Bill Tucci. <laughs> Wrestling looking, badass. Looking at some uh, she and the link for the she omnibus is in the description below. If there's any mods in the chat, could drop the link in the chat so people can take a look at that. This is just some of the stuff we're going to be seeing in the omnibus uh, about this infamous character she crazy crazy times buddy let's see brian brian says olympics in tokyo is a great time to release she material release she material well we're doing it brother we're trying man we got the campaigns going live now so it's a it's been a hell of a first 36 hours i'll tell you that yes congrats billy uh it, it's awesome yeah, i yeah every we just unlocked um well, right now numbers are all. I think they're closing in on. Uh, well, Kickstarter's closing in on thirty thousand. That launched last night, and the Indiegogo is over seventy-five thousand. Yeah. So um, we're moving towards our next stretch goal, which is going to be uh, a sticker, uh, a really nice um, uh, uh, vinyl sticker, nice big one though, five inches. Nice. And then we're gonna. And then the next stretch goal, bro. I'm gonna. Put, I'm gonna drop it right here and tell me if you're picking up what I'm. What I'm, if you're picking up what I'm putting down right now, All right, let's hear dude, it. I think we're going to do a she as a, a, like Brian Blevins. My, my boy, Brian Blevins came up with the idea, the uh -huh. she nom nom the bus chocolate bar. What? Yes, bro. Everyone's going to get a freaking chocolate bar. What? We hit 150 K. That's so nice to everybody, man. bro. It's like so 90s and 80s. Like, you know, dude, they isn't it with chocolate, like a nice Hershey bar with a <laughs> custom wrapper, bro. Dude, that would be insane. I think it is, dude. I think it is. <laughs> I mean, only you would be able to do that. Nah, well, we'll see. We'll, but but I think that's going to be a whole new thing. We'll do chocolate bars, man. So uh, they ain't cheap, though. <laughs> that's, yeah, I could imagine. They're dude. not cheap, but you know what? So what? You know, if you can't spread it, if you can't spread it out, why not? Oh, it's Atomic Angels. That's yeah, it. look, uh, uh, Ethan was just talking about this book. That was uh, a fun property. That really was. Yeah, I was talking to my... Uh, friend of mine and he was saying that it kind of reminded him of like a bubblegum crisis with the, the chicks which is like that's like an anime with like a cyber yeah anime. yeah like, well that that was exactly supposed to be the um the look was supposed to be that uh awesome. was to, to harken on that and that's uh nelson Asensio did that cover image and we ended up having philip ellison draw on the book and not philip ellison that's my college roommate um uh what the hell is his name uh steve ellis sorry draw on the book and uh, that was a fun book. It's so funny because that book sold like 60,000 copies. Yeah. Each, but that's, that wasn't a lot. You're like, oh, man, I only sold 60,000 copies. I guess I better start doing more she books. <laughs> yeah, if, if it sold 60,000 copies. You do four copies, issues yeah. at 60 grand each, and you're kind of complaining about it. <laughs> that's how nuts the time was, dude. The, those numbers today are like Batman numbers. Yeah, you know? they're bigger than Batman. Well, yeah, Batman numbers probably. <laughs> Look, she's got a, a she jacket. Heck yes, he does. Looks like it. That's yeah, no, Eric, it's not going to be white chocolate, bro. It's going to be regular chocolate. I like milk chocolate. Yeah, no, I love milk chocolate. It's much better than uh, all these other ones. Yeah. Well, yeah that's when Tomo, she's reunited with Tomo A, and, um, and there's Pete, the, who ends up, Anna ends up marrying and stuff, and, mm. and uh, just fun stuff. I hate that drawing. I fucked that drawing up. <laughs> you got to start, you start rushing, you know? Yeah. Uh, what's up with her head, the one on the top? Like, why is her head tilted like that? What was I doing? I don't know, man. It's like, that's like, what a terrible drawing. <laughs> oh, she's so cool. And then she, she always, she, she, well, see, here's another thing I would do is that she would fight and, you know, like she's fighting a dude that's like six, seven, like your size, you know, yeah. bigger. And, you know, he's going to hit her. He's going to knock the shit out of her. You know, yeah. you see these movies where the girl takes – you ever see a movie where you get this big dude and there's this girl like Scarlett Johansson, right? Yes. And this guy just clocks her in the freaking jaw and she shakes it off? <laughs> oh, shit. You know? I mean, yeah. come on. You're going to get hit in the jaw, especially by a big dude like that and you're a little girl like Scarlett Johansson who's like five foot three, 110, 120 pounds. You're going to knock him into a wall. And no, that, him. That's so, great storytelling too. Like I was reading um, some berserk uh, – a few months ago and that character just gets the shit beat out of him you know and just ran through the gutter and i feel like you know if it lets the reader feel for the character more you feel like there's danger when mm -hmm. the character's bleeding they're getting beat up and when they overcome that obstacle it's that much 
better for the yeah. story. Um, yeah. So to have that, you know, this character getting slapped around. That's, yeah, and, then, uh, and then Anna's grandfather comes because she can't beat him. And Anna's grandfather comes who's ooh. probably there. He's 70. Now he's 90. Yeah. 93. And he just cuts that dude in half, man. Look at his body. His top of his body just slides off. <laughs> Look at that. Oh, <laughs> just, God damn, that's so cool. <laughs> the gore and everything. And that's, you know, that's why doing it indie, you could you could do this stuff. Um, and it's amazing. And, and another cool thing about this series that I love is now that you've brought it back um, with Return of the War Warrior and Haikyuu, these yeah. characters, you remember them? You know, the, the grandfather is still around yeah uh, he's still kicking he's alive and kicking man i uh, yoshi tori gotta be honest man yoshi tori's gotta live to be 100 at least yeah because he's like 92 now or something i'm like yeah. he's gotta be 100 and he gets a crap kicked out of him too in in the haikyo book yeah by yeah. Uh, dr blevins the evil dr yeah. blevins no it, it's it's awesome that's that that's another reason i like books like hellboy where that book um kind of aged when with time passing, you know, you could go back and look in the, in the nineties and the early stuff that was set in the nineties. And now the stuff that he came out with a few years ago, uh, all the characters are aged and you know, Hellboy goes to hell and stuff like that. Yeah. Really? That, you know, and that's, that's what we did too. That's the same exact thing is like, you know, Anna's a mom now. So yeah. she has Motaro, her daughter. And, and that's when we had fun with her actually pulling, uh, you know, she's pulling, uh, trying to put on the old costume. If you, if you, if you read return of the warrior, and it rips because she can't fit in it anymore and, you know, stuff like that. And and then yeah. uh, also, if you go back to the issue number six, uh -huh. some of the fun stuff that we could do with comics back in the day, that's seven as eight. You got to go to number six. Five, six. You had it already. Oh, okay. there it is. Open that up and there's a double page spread of her at the Museum of Natural History dancing in front of the dinosaur exhibit. <laughs> is there? Yeah. Yeah. Keep going. Yeah, because Anna's dancing and Tomo's dancing. So there you go. Okay, so if you pull in on that top panel, right, and you go left to right, okay, so the dude on the one le on the left, right, that's Tom Sagoski who's writing Vampirella. Uh -huh. The guy underneath the doll, the, the the thing's jaw who's smiling, that's Ethan Feller. Right uh -huh. there, yeah, that's Ethan. And Ethan was um the he was the editor of Combo. The other guy dancing with the girls, my friend Tom. Then you go right there. That's Jimmy Pomiati in a bathrobe because Jimmy <laughs> went to uh, Jimmy went and with George Perez's model and Jimmy went to uh, the Heroes Con and showed up at the party just like that. The, <laughs> the Heroes Con. And if you keep scrolling to the right, keep going, keep going, pulling right down there uh, behind. See where Anna's butt is pulling by her <laughs> butt a little more. Dude, that's Theodore Roosevelt. <laughs> there he is. Yeah. And then you pull to the right a little bit. And there's old Ronnie Reagan. <laughs> Try Reagan in there, you know. <laughs> That's awesome. No, I love stuff like this. My uh, my buddy Alan Alonzo, who does our Masquerade comics, he does uh, little Easter eggs of people. He's got like uh, the whole cast of I Love Lucy in the audience of this theater in, in the Lost Pages. No, that's fun. Exactly. Yeah, see, so that's the best part. You could do what you want, Phil. Yeah. yeah. Your book. No, for sure. For good and bad. Some people do bad, stupid stuff, and some people do some, you know, funny stuff. Yeah, for sure. Let's see uh, what else we did to these guys. And, of course, um, we have some of the newer stuff, which is amazing. This was a lot of people's best comic of the year when it came out, man. Really? That, dude, the ending into this is so good. It's such, like, a movie, like, thriller. Um to bring the character back in a big bad way, man. This is so oh so thank good. you. And, and see that your your I remember drawing that. Your it's like brown, right? That that remark is brown. Yes. Yeah, that's the only one I did with brown marker. <laughs> awesome. So very cool. Now this is great. We got the glow in the dark. Dark edition. Thank you, bro, for that. Edition, of course. And all of these, man. Great American flag cover. Yeah, see, that was another thing. I drew that on, if you look at the date, I drew it on Veterans Day. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to put Sheen American flag. So what has nothing to do with the story? Who cares? That's awesome. <laughs> so striking. And we'll uh, we'll take a look at the campaign in a second and probably wrap this up. Um, but man, look at that. Great. First splash. Yeah. And bow and arrow. So cool. Once again, and you know, Still using those uh, little breaks in the panels to lead the eye. Yeah, yeah. So cool. Help, help follow it. 
Yeah, thanks they for were such fun times, me. man. And they're fun times now, though. These are fun times, man. Yeah, this is a yeah. gold, new golden age of of uh, of comics. It really is a, a new golden age of creator owned comics. Like I said, doing Indiegogos, uh, doing Kickstarters if you want to. It's it's unbelievable. It's 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 really an, an amazing amazing time. And and uh, and the cool thing is is that you you know you deal directly to the customers. You know, Phil, and you know they'll tell you if what you're doing it sucks. It's Jay Lee Hellshock. So I publish an ad for him. Why not? He's a buddy of mine. Cool. Look at that. I now, never what, try to cancel him. What? Yeah. One thing I um, always love about your art is how fashionable the characters are. Like, there's that one image on your campaign page of Anna in that just beautiful suit dress. Oh yeah, yeah. And so fashionable. And that's where you kind of got your uh, career start was in fashion, right? Um, yeah, I went to school for illust fashion illustration. So, you know that you know that's that's uh, you know that's it. That's I, I was a, a fashion illustrator. Well, I went to school for illustration. I decided I went into fashion. A my girlfriend was doing it, not Debbie. Debbie went to school with us, but yeah. uh, but and she I was kind of going back and forth between these two girls. As one does. As one does. Hey man, it was eight girls. Every guy, half the guys were gay. I had it made. <laughs> I was doing them a service, I think. These girls. So, uh, but Debbie and I would break up, and that, you know, and 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 then the, the other girl, I don't want to say her name, um, and uh, I would go back and forth. But uh, it, it um, the hell's my point? Oh, but yeah. So I went. So I I I chose to go through fashion illustration as opposed to general illustration, yeah. just because um, I'd rather draw beautiful women that you know in life drawing classes than like fat old dudes. Yeah, for sure. Oh no, that, that's hilarious. Yeah, that's so, the way to do it, and it paid off. Look at all these the yeah. women you're drawing them. Man. Yeah, it's just so cool. Yeah, so let's uh, look at that campaign page. Yeah, so it's our. Oh yeah, Tish, Tishir Mufuni is my favorite actor. Seven Samurai is my my favorite film. I like Mufuni. I like Errol Flynn. I like uh, Steve McQueen. Um, cool. Those those guys are like my favorites. I I think I like Brad Pitt. I thought he was great in um, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. I'm reading the book actually right now. Oh, I love that movie. I love what he beat the piss out of them hippies at the end <laughs> and torched them. That was great. Uh, th thanks for coming on, uh, Billy. I know this is short notice. I really wanted to do this to kind of look through it over the over the books. But this is it, people. The she. Look at that! Oh dang! Look at that! Seventy five, baby. Let's do a refresh. Let's see. Thank you guys for everyone who supported us. Really appreciate oh, it. You got uh, oh, man, three more backers. <laughs> awesome. Oh yeah. The, the link is below, and this is man. This is what it's gonna come in, or this is the. That's what it's gonna look like. That's a mock up of it. God damn. No, that's so cool. I love the imagery. You got that. That's the checkered dress. We'll yep. see uh, right here. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It's based it. on a Gianni Versace design. God, that's beautiful, and it's it just just stuff like this, and the, and the, the intricate fashionable designs wasn't being done back then in comics. It just... No, it was horrible. If you ever see Tom McFarlane, how he dressed Mary Jane <laughs> and then, or, and then Wanda and spawn. It's like, I would look at him like, Oh dude, like <laughs> oh, you can make a woman look sexy and not have to look like a hooker, you know, like, or, like a cheap, you know, what people think a hooker looks like. Yeah, for sure. He would draw him with fishnets on and high heels and Oh my God. <laughs> That's so cool. So this is just the first of multiple, Omnibuses. Yes, right? this is the first sixteen issues of She. I think I publish. I think there's like eighty issues of She out there. Yeah. So we're gonna do multiple omnibuses. Probably do like four of them, five of them. You know, that's gonna be crazy, dude. I can't wait to uh, get another bookshelf so I can put all of them, <laughs> all of them up there. It's gonna be some thick, thick books. Hey, uh, you got shirts on here. You got uh, challenger coins. The thing that I I kind of wanted, but it got itself sold out. They had like the metal edition of the omnibus, which is insane. Uh, well, we might add more, right? How many Debbie just came up? Yes, and actually, somebody just sent us a message with a really good. Um... Sorry, my wife's wearing a bikini, <laughs> so I'm just staring at her. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. You're hot. Come on. Sorry. Anyway. <laughs> sent us a message requesting a metal sketch edition. I don't know if I could draw on that. In the metal sketch? Oh, in it. 
Yeah, yeah all right. Metal. Yeah, do like 10. Sketching yeah, that's a good idea. But let's add some more metal editions. They're going to be numbered. Right now we had 50 of them, right? Make a yeah. I have to add them to... Um... There's the one that's They're sold out. Phil, yet. Phil, are they sold out if you scroll down into metal? Because Debbie added some more. No, I didn't oh. add them yet. Oh, you didn't add them yet? Yeah, metal edition so is sold out. Yeah. 50 of them are gone. Make 100 of them. Make 99 of them. That's good. Oh, I added 25 already? Yeah, make, a, make 99 it of was them. Was 50? It was 50. I added them yet. Nope, they, they're there. They're all sold out. Yeah. All right. Well. Yeah, they sold out in like the first hour. I think. Yeah, do that now. We'll make them limited to 99 copies. He's on Kickstarter? No, he's on Indiegogo. Oh, I know they sold out. I'm talking about Kickstarter. Yeah. They may still be on Kickstarter. Oh. Phil doesn't shop on Kickstarter. Are you kidding me? Phil hates Kickstarter. <laughs> I'm trying to explain it. She has no idea about any of this stuff that's going on. And I try to get it to her. We got a question, Billy. Uh, thoughts on the new Snake Eyes trailer, the movie. Did you see that? Nah, I didn't see it. I just, I've been busy. I've been working. We've been planning a campaign. Yeah, I've, been working. I've been planning two campaigns. So Snake Eyes now, I believe he talks and he takes his mask off. And uh, they made him... Because uh, Snake Eyes originally was like the blonde white guy, right? He's yeah, kind of, and they changed it. To yeah, the Japanese guy, guy, right? I don't mind that. I don't mind them changing with Japanese guy. It's, I mean, it's kind of more apropos if he's got samurai swords and everything. Um, Deb wants to know. Deb, see the the buy Debbie a drink. Tier. Oh, you're right here. Buy Debbie a drink. Tier is it active? No, right? You should activate that. You work just as hard all through the campaign. Okay. Well. In the meantime, can you please, when you're done, because I have to go take our son out. Okay. Um, can you take him out? Well, to get him whatever he needs oh. to get for the millions of the party teenage boys that are on their way here right now. They should call some girls. Tell me, can't have a party unless okay. he brings some girls over. Get off the, the sausage please. party in the back. Billy Tucci. Sorry. Thank you. I please make an update on both campaigns when you're off your stream that the omnibus has been added as an add-on. For each campaign, for the people oh. who want the the exclusive foil print and the omnibus. Okay. Um, you're gonna have to just write that down, or just text me what that is, and I'll do it right now. All right. Well, after I get off. But please add those extra books first. Okay. So let me take this down before these kids descend on me. They're coming here at five o'clock, honey. You got it's four thirty, dude. It's four twenty-two, honey. <laughs> hey, can I get some fries with that shake? <laughs> the two cheese, ladies and gentlemen. This is great entertainment. Do, 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 do. Yeah, the two cheese. <laughs> Everybody back this. I think it's a great idea to add um, the actual main book as an add-on so people could grab the pin and then add on the book and, yeah. and all that stuff. So the, the coin, collector's coin, everybody. So jump on this campaign. He's got prints. He's got shirts. He's got books. Uh, if you guys missed out on the... Uh, previous campaigns like Haikyo, Return of the Warrior, those books, a hardcover edition, are available on this campaign. And uh, if you, I would implore you guys, if you haven't, get those books. It's you know the yeah, return. There's a few left. We really ran out. We have uh, of the regular editions, you know, like the Glow right. Darks and the the covers you have, the, that mm -hmm. other cover you have. There's very few of those. I might have twenty of them. I think yeah. they're on our website, but they're very, very few. We have we print you, we printed probably four hundred hardcovers over or three hundred hardcovers over. Yeah, but because uh, they're so expensive to make, you, it it pays to make more of those, you know. Sure. Um. So that's why we were offering the hardcovers, but those soft covers, those just like just like the next book we do, Sakura. Um. I, I like to do them and get them done. So when I go to a con, bro, I can just yeah. have one book up. You know, the hardcover. Yeah. Instead of having old Billy, you know, variants. six variants or whatever it was. For and sure. And thank you for helping me bring my stuff uh, in Chicago two years ago. Yeah. Bring yeah. all my stuff to the to the hotel from the from the convention center. No, it was fun. It was a great time. It was a really cool small con, and you yeah, were right, right by the entrance. Everybody was coming over. Uh, yeah. It was really really great uh, hanging out with you there, and we got to do it again at another con. Soon. Absolutely. And it was funny when you came with like, so um, I didn't know you, you know, you're like, so uh, yeah. you comic skate? And I'm thinking, <laughs> oh, I gotta sock this guy. <laughs> he's gonna say something to me, you know? And then I'm like, why? He goes, and, he, and you're like, because I am. I'm like, oh, yeah. what's up, man? <laughs> oh, yeah, I need to do it. No, yeah, it was uh, super fun uh, chilling out there. And uh, hopefully more cons are coming up and uh, we, we could do uh, the For the Fans Fest thing and all be yeah. selling our, our awesome. Uh, 
comics there. That would be so cool. Yeah, that's going to be a good time for sure. Yeah. So everybody, get on over here. Back this. Let's get this uh, campaign to the moon uh, because she deserves it. What a yes, thank you all for helping. I mean, that, it, it's so funny because you asked for, I don't know if you do this, Phil, but you asked for like, you know, I asked for like 10 grand. Yeah, need like fifty though, just to print them because it's so sure. Like, no, kind of, yeah. you know, and you're kind of freaking out the whole first day, you know, and and uh, and then like like oh thank God we can make them. <laughs> yeah, dude, <laughs> yeah, I make can them anyway, no matter what. Take yeah, a mortgage like, out of the house or something. Over four hundred eighty-eight pages. That is yeah. insane. insane. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's gonna be big. And that thing, these things all have to be hardcover, right? Because yeah, so they're all hardcovers. Hard Somebody had, had mentioned this. Uh, um, uh, uh, you know, a soft cover, but I don't know. I figure out first omnibus. You want it to be real high, you know, real pristine prestige format. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, we got uh, just a couple questions, and then we'll take out, get out of here. Uh, Chris Braz wants to know favorite comic book artist and writer. Billy. Man, I have to say my favorite comic book artist. Man, probably Dave Stevens. You know, I mean, but then again, I think Joe Kubert. Yeah. You know, I think uh, John Romita, I, ah, geez, it's, that's a tough one, man. That's a really, really tough one. Um, mm -hmm. And in favorite writer, yeah, I love Chuck Dixon's work. Um, I think Chuck is one of the greatest comic book writers of all time. Stan Lee, of course. Uh, Roy Thomas. Um, Frank Miller, you know, oh, yeah. sure, definitely Frank Miller. So, so good. That, that's pretty much where I'm at. Yeah, I've been looking at a lot of Frank Miller stuff and um, like his, this the evolution of his art. Like you go from book to book and it just, art just is so drastically different. It's so cool from Daredevil to Ronin to Sin City. Um, it, it's amazing. Yeah, he's such a prolific, prolific guy. The yeah, I think the only comic book, I think the only comic book Debbie's ever read, aside from my books that she just reads to copy edit, yeah. is uh, 300. Oh wow! Yeah, I really, really think that's the only comic book she's ever read. She yeah. loves. It. Yeah, and my favorite artist, of course, Simon Bisley. The Biz. oh, Bisley's great. Um, somebody said I thought so. Jim Lee, Mark Savashi, they're great. Uh, what are your thoughts of Jim Shooter? I love Jim Shooter. I think Jim Shooter's great. Uh, you know, just uh, it's uh, it's an amazing industry. It really is. It, and and what such talent who create Chris Claremont's one of my favorites too. Um, I, I love Stan Sakai. I mean, I can go all over. You know, Jeff Smith, Terry Moore. I can just, I, yeah. it, 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 it's so eclectic. It's so different. Oh, for it's sure. It's hard just to have one, one guy or gal that you, that's your favorite. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, we're making some kick ass comics. Everybody, this is, I, I already backed this. Get on it, people. Thank um, you, bro. No problem. Hey, Mickey. Man. <laughs> and then, uh, if you guys have backed, Magic Cop, the proofs are in. So check this out. We have our proof copy, and everything is at the printers right now, getting printed. So next week, um, they should be shipped out to us. We should get them by the end of the week, and we're going to start fulfilling right then and there. So we'll be fulfilling this month. At the end of the month, uh, you know, we got the beautiful Poplar Romero cover. We have the reprint of the first one, which is by Kelsey Shannon. That cover, Look at that. So gorgeous cool. and then uh, links for that are in the description you can still grab those and then of course the lost pages two is right around the corner after we ship magic cop two uh we have a lot of new awesome story for people that love superheroes vigilante stuff uh and definitely looking at characters like she for that that vigilante influence um so guys head on over to the lost pages two mailing list sign up we're gonna get that dark vigilante the silhouette he is back uh to wreak havoc on the streets of chicago and all of our other favorite heroes from the universe of the lost pages so check that out people here here and uh we will see you guys later thanks everybody thanks phil thanks.